You guys know that a male cricket's ear is located on the tibula of its leg. Pretty crazy. Anyway, what's up guys? I wanted to do a review on the Panasonic GX85 or the GX80. Okay, this is a micro four thirds camera and I've been using it now for over a week. I've been using it as much as I can. I've been using it with um, several different lenses. Lenses is, 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 is. Uh, and I can tell you a few things off the bat. First, I'm gonna start, whoa, with the negatives that I find. So if these are gonna prevent you from getting the camera, uh, you don't gotta watch the rest of the video. But biggest negative, doesn't have a microphone jack okay there's no microphone jack on this guy um, so you're basically stuck with the eternal uh, the eternal microphone which isn't bad we'll do some audio test here in a second so that is number one number two is the battery life the battery life I think I've read some things like an hour and a half or an hour I went through three batteries in like a half day and I wasn't even using it the whole time so definitely you're gonna want a bunch of batteries and I'll put a uh, link to some batteries that I got that seem to work just fine same as the uh, battery that's included but battery life and no external microphone input besides that I would definitely recommend this camera and now I'll tell you why because the stabilization for one okay the stabilization it has five axis stabilization um, and then there's also Panasonic has a whole line of lenses for micro four-thirds for their uh, G series lineup now um, well the camera keeps sliding here it's kind of raining but what we're doing we're driving down to the river I have the kit lens on here this kit lens is 12 to 32 and this, this specific one has built-in stabilization as well. So there's five axis stabilization in the actual body, and then there's two axis stabilization in the Panasonic lenses. And this is one of them. Real quick, let me just show you what I'm talking about. This is handheld with the GX85. Now I've switched lenses to the GH4, and this is handheld. Big difference. Now, will the stabilization work with other lenses? Say if you want to get an Olympus or a, uh, what are the mother knockoff ones? Whatever. Yes, it does. The answer is yes. They will. The stabilization is amazing, even with lenses that don't have stabilization in it. Now, the stabilization with the lenses that do work for it, hold on here real quick. I wanted to pull over and uh, there's like, this crane I was driving by here earlier and I wanted to get kind of like a picture but I probably should turn my hazards on I want to snap a picture right here so let me uh... Just took a few pictures there. I don't know, I went by here earlier and the reflection, there was such a overcast, the reflection with that crane up there. I'm not gonna get out because it's raining right now. But uh, had the clouds and everything, just looked really good. So back to the stabilization. The lenses that don't have stabilization still do work and I did lots of testing with this. I have the uh, Panasonic, no, no, the uh, Olympus 12 to 40 millimeter, no stabilization. Uh, I get really nice, stable results with this. Uh, also, the uh, Olympus 75 millimeter, um, guess what? I can get really good usable footage handheld with that lens. It's just amazing. Like, uh, I also use the Panasonic GH4. The stabilization is just unreal compared to the Panasonic GH4. Um, one more negative kind of thing I was thinking about it is that the lens or not the lens but the screen on the back actually doesn't rotate so if you want to use this as a vlog camera which it would work perfect for um, the screen only rotates like that so it just slides straight out 
or like that. So down, I mean, it's, you know, it's still a nice screen, but then again, on the back, it's not protected. And, uh, you know, not like that's a really big deal, but it's just one thing to think about. Now, if you're new to using Panasonic cameras, well, you can use an app. They have a Panasonic app to where you can directly connect to the app and use your phone or your tablet as the monitor to view your footage. You can also control that manually uh, using it remote via the app. And I mean, it works It works pretty good. I mean, definitely, you know, you can tap focus and um, you know, a lot of the gripes about it is that it won't go full screen, but if you have an iPhone or an iPad like me, an alternative that what you can do, I don't know if people know this, but you can turn on three finger tap three finger tap will blow up your whole screen and then it gives you a full screen and then you can tap and get your focus and uh, yeah, line up your shot and things like that. So uh, we'll look around the camera here in just a second, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to the river. I think the rain is letting up and we're going to get some handheld footage with the kit lens that comes with it. And the kit lens, it shrinks down. It's got a really thin profile and then you just twist it and it pops up. So it's kind of cool but yeah that's that we're gonna go down there and uh i'll see you down at the river all right guys made it down here to the river by the uh, lock and dam kind of got a bridge nice overcast clouds um <coughs> so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna walk around and do start doing some shooting with this i'm gonna be mostly doing videos but i will switch it over and take a couple pictures um yeah so let's go shoot Something else I really like about this guy is that it's so tiny. I mean, that's obvious, right? Micro four thirds. But you would get this and you'd be like, oh, this is really gonna be light and cheesy. It's got some weight to it. I mean, it's not extremely heavy, but it does have some weight to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it and just do uh, some shooting here. All right, and uh, yeah, this camera does shoot at in 4K. And this is handheld, so let's kind of get some shots. So, yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention, if I remember right, let's see here. There's, diff there's a ton of different profiles in this thing for one. Um, like picture profiles, or I guess you could add a, oh, the pan, the panoramic is awesome. Let me do the panoramic real quick. I think that's a new feature, my, uh, Okay, so in panoramic mode, it it will, it does the settings for you, it must. So let's just take a picture, and then you just go with the arrow. Oh yeah, that is so awesome. Uh, what other modes do we have? There's a whole ton, I'll probably make a different video on that one. There's like freeze animals, sports, monochrome, people are making a big deal like, oh my gosh, monochrome. It's just so nice. But, all right, let's do and find some more stuff to get some video uh, around here.
the focus is pretty quick um it's definitely a lot quicker with not necessarily the kit lens that's the one we're using now and i really wanted to get a lot of footage with the kit lens because that's what it comes with and you don't have any option to just buy the camera by itself which is kind of a bummer get some uh shots here i'm half tempted to walk across that bridge at least halfway but here let me just pretend i was a tripod here and do a pan I've been shooting in uh, manual here. I actually, let's stop it here. And I'm gonna switch it over to auto. Let's see how good of a job it does in auto. Where is auto? I'm um, still learning where all uh, the menus and stuff is. So we can shoot where I set the aperture, shutter speed, or I do both. There's no straight. Where's the auto auto? What am I in here? Aperture priority. And it does, I think it does pretty good. If you ask me, I think it does pretty good. But uh, let's actually, let's walk across here to the bridge. Get some more shots out on the bridge. It's getting sunny out here now. Look at that, my battery's already dying. So I'm not sure if you saw that or not, but you can see my battery has already died. Like I said, that's the biggest issue with this thing is that the batteries die. You gotta have like, I mean, for a full day of shooting, depending on what you call a full day, you might need to have like 10, 10 batteries. It's like two for 30 or something. So I don't know, but I got some more footage I wanna show you. A lot of this footage I'm about to show you now it's random that I took over the last week. It's uh, here and there and everywhere and this and that and me using different lenses and different examples like uh, like putting on different lenses and comparing them with my uh, Panasonic GH4, just stuff like that. But I mean, overall, the camera is awesome. I mean, it's completely awesome. 
Uh, but let's jump over and take a closer look at it. Right, guys let's take a close look around this I'm not gonna go through every little detail uh, there's a lot in this little camera um, but I'll just kind of show you around the battery door is down here at the bottom just pops out boom and goes in that's where the SD card goes to so just pops in there like that that closes and there's a little tiny door here. Not really sure what that's for, but yeah, put the uh, door back on. On the side, we have HDMI out, and then we have a USB charging. So you charge this off USB. Otherwise, like I said, I got some batteries that came with the charger. I like to charge them that way. But if you were uh, to charge it, you can charge it via USB, and you have an HDMI out, which is also pretty sweet. So you can hook this up to a TV and get, you know, live footage that way. The screen does that, and does that, and does that. Um, we have some buttons here, some FN, some FN2 shortcuts, garbage display, ISO, white balance. Uh, I believe that's for like taking multiple pictures and that might be for graph um, uh, this is, will switch the view let's just go ahead and turn it on here for a second now the first thing it asked me to do is just to uh, rotate the zoom ring that's because the lens like I said it's kind of a small profile but you extend that and it will be good then um, this does shoot in 4k Got the recording quality there um, at 100 megabits per second or 24k or 24k wow I think I must be tired 4k 24p um, 60 30 VGA and let's go back here it is touchscreen um, some of this stuff I might not think to say but here's the exposure mode one thing I, I really like that they do now is they put a description across the top so you can see which what the menus are for but they have to you know I'll just kind of go through some of these um, the stabilizer you got the operation mode you turn that off because if you put this on a tripod you got the stabilization mode on you start to do a pan you'll get some uh, you know river watery looking shots uh, e stabilization you turn that off as well and the focal length when you put on certain lenses it will allow you to set the focal length uh, but there's some lenses I'm not sure if this is recognized but this is you know it's the kit lens so it you know it probably is recognized but it just doesn't let me pick and plus you can't really pick one because you know it's not a fixed focal length but um, but I, when I put some of my Panasonic lenses on there it doesn't pick those up but uh, it still works and stabilizes. You just can't set the focal length. So um, go back. Uh, silent operation is on. You can also turn that off and then probably have, I think, more noises from the camera. I just like a silent camera. Um, mic level display I have off. I can turn that on. And then I can also adjust it. You can see it there. Uh, wind noise cancellator, okay. And all the, I don't want to bore you with all these menus. Just know that, um, yeah, let's just keep going. I mean, uh, because there's a lot, and you can go into these and see what they do for yourself um, because they have the 
little bar right there. So let's just go ahead and move on. We do have a place to put like a flash or uh, maybe like a handle or a light. And yeah, up here we have the different modes for movie, um, like the panoramic like we took. This is scenes, like I said, this thing has, these are pretty cool too. You can shoot video in most of them. Some of them you cannot, uh, but they're pretty neat. You, you know, if you like to experiment with stuff and try different things and look for different looks, these are pretty cool. But you can see there's a whole ton of them. And then they have like another uh, one here. You have high key, low key, the monochrome, just a whole lot. There's one like there's like a sunlight, oh sunshine, that's what it is. But I'll pull it off here. It puts like sunshine in the shot. So I don't know, whatever. There's a whole bunch of those, and you know a lot of them are cool. So. Not gonna really go through all those either. So um, when you're shooting like manual, you got your um, shutter speed here, I believe. I better double check that because I'm still, I still get confused sometimes. So yeah, that's your your shutter speed. Then you have your aperture is here, and they feel pretty good. You know, it's whatever. Um, yeah, overall, even, the, I mean, the cam feels, at first, I picked it up, and I was like, holy cow, this thing is, it's tiny. It's super tiny, especially compared to, like, uh, my GH4. No, there's a quick overhead view. That's GH3, but GH4 is the same size. So, you can see it's, it's quite a bit smaller. Um, other than that, though, it uh, comes with the shoulder strap. Cool, whatever, and a charging cord, and I think that's it. So this is what you get right here for, I think it's like right under $800. But with that being said, I do want to go out and show you more footage because obviously if it's not good footage, uh, you probably won't want to buy it. And am I happy with it? Yes. I wish I would. I wish everything was a little bit cheaper, but I wish that they would have sold it individually without the without the lens because I have a bunch of lenses already and looking at that footage that I did at the beginning of the video, I just wasn't too impressed um, with it. It was really sunny and I was shooting right into the sun, but I don't know. When you start to get into the other lenses that aren't kit lenses, you can get some really neat ones. Um, and I wanna show you an example of one really quick. This one's only, I think $25, let me grab it. All right, so here it is right here. This guy is 25. It's a 35 millimeter lens and uh, these $35 and you can get amazing shots with this guy. It's uh, this one, it's sold by a few different um, manufacturers, but this one, they started tagging it, the Fotsi. I think that's how you say it. Uh, they started making basically their own. These used to be like put on security cameras, but then they just, they're like, wow, you can get some really amazing shots. This is a 35 millimeter f1.7. And here, I don't know if you can see that. It's just crazy. It comes with that little adapter. Slap it on the lens. Like that. Now, this, this uh, lens is manual now look i turned it on right away it says current focal length settings is eight millimeter would i like to change yes because this is a 35 so i'll switch it over to 35 press set and boom now i can shoot but lenses like this they're really cheap and they do some really awesome results so if you want to get this one you know you know you don't want to break the bank and buy something uh one of the panty uh, lenses or something like that then you can always get some of these and get some really good results that way so that being said let's uh, check out more of footage uh, that I've shot over the week
right, so I'm doing this handheld, like everything else I've been doing, and it's ISO four hundred. 800, 1600, 1600. It's ISO 1600 right now.